let's go a little bit deeper on the breadth of nanoscope. So nanoscope itself, as we just talked about, is a 1.9 millimeter flexible camera, easy to bend and manipulate. As you are bending and manipulating, I'll tell you to avoid the chip on the stick. So we avoid the couple distal millimeters and the rest is very bendable. Okay. But then as we look at the scope and actually the handle, I think I'd like to point out is your buttons. These buttons are highly customizable. Uh, so they can adjust whatever you want them to be. So why I have mine set up is that one quick push is a picture and one long pause is a video. Both buttons do the same thing because sometimes in the surgery, we get moving and we push the wrong button. So that really makes it very user friendly. Your kit that you're going to get comes with this white low flow cannula. Uh, it also has a sharp trocar inside it. What I like prefer in my clinic and in my patients is using this 10 degree nano. And why I like it as well, I teach residents and this comes with a blunt tip. That's nice and smooth and really helps protect the cartilage as I come in and out of the joint. Looking at the uh, small tools that we were just talking about, we also are demonstrating the 0.8 millimeter shaver, the saver. And so when you have a really small scope, you really need a shaver that complements the small joint. So as Dr. Kennedy was just talking about, going into a small joint with no distraction, you need small equipment to be able to fit in the hole. And a 4.0 shaver is just really not going to get that job done for you. Uh, they also have a complementary burr that goes with it as well. And we'll demonstrate that here in a second. And then as Dr. Kennedy also talked about, SJ50, which is a 3.3 millimeter blader. Cool thing about this is that around the edge, you get 360 degree cut. But the real benefit for this in my practice is that it irrigates and sucks at the same time. So what that means is it limits the, the bubbles that you see to block your vision. And also as it's sucking the fluid out, the temperature in the joint stays very consistent and doesn't let it get hot and cause any iatrogenic injury as you're in there. The next thing we're talking about is the disposable equipment. The new disposable equipment that's coming out is, again, very small, very user-friendly. And being disposable, you're going to get the sharpest, best edges to be able to cure out or clean up the edges around an osteochondral lesion. Uh, so this right here is a grasper, and you can see the angle I put on it already. So I'll just kind of show you briefly here what can be done to customize. If you're going to go over and reach into a hard spot, what we can do is put this in, and then we can easily manipulate and bend. And the great thing about this is, it continues to work. So this technology allows us to be able to manipulate and then continue to use the instruments after you've customized them to what you need for your patient. So let's go see how this looks. So we've already created our posterior medial and posterior lateral portals using the nick and spread technique for safety. Portal goes in, I hold it, we pull out our blunt, and then the camera goes in. Nano pops in really nice. Turn your flow on. And of course, you know, this is, uh, it's like going to Disney World. So we've kind of already cheated and had the joint exposed. One thing I'll tell you, if you look at my hand right here, as I rest my pinky or some of my hand on the tissue, what that allows you to do is have good proprioception because the nano is so small and so slick, you'll find yourself pistoning in and out of the joint and really obscuring your own view. So this is a great little tip. Rest something on there. It really allows you to have good control. All right. So now we've already established the visualization. So we went in with a uh, shaver in the SJ50. So now I just kind of want to show how some of this kind of works. So this... Uh, it's not unlike others, but the beautiful thing about it is you can kind of get the edge and then it continues to suck and be able to ablate. And as you know, if you've done posterior ankle arthroscopy, going after some of this tissue, and as we develop the plane, you really have to take down that posterior capsule uh, and take down the posterior capsule and some of the inferior branch of PITFL. You can see we've left it intact up here. Uh, and then the first thing you want to do is, Dr. Kennedy and I were talking a minute ago, is true safety. So this right here is one of my favorite questions for my residents as we come in. Or what is this structure? This is the lighthouse of the posterior aspect of the ankle. So this is the FHL tendon. And we can come right down here with Nano and just dunk directly into the tendon sheath and actually be able to visualize the FHL. You can see right down the sheath. I guarantee you cannot get that view with a 4.0 uh, scope. And so the one little trick that I've uh, got in my practice, I don't like seeing my diabetic patients, you know, but we do. So you have a great toe ulcer. Why not incorporate Nano and go after their best tissue and come in here and do an FHL Anatomy with the scope and with nano and make it kind of a fun case instead of a typical diabetic case that we kind of all uh, fear. Uh, so then the ability to look in the back of the ankle. So this is the tibial tailor joint. You can see our view is amazing. So as Dr. Kennedy was talking about, we can see everything we want to see with this small camera. Uh, we're not limited uh, of what we're doing. We can rotate, obviously, as well. And the video capability is very good for teaching and training purposes. If you see any of our videos, it's just... Uh, just amazing how we can really video such nice uh, features. Now looking down to the subtalar joint. And again, you cannot fit this in with a 4.0 scope. So to be able to visualize this, 
is just incredibly hard with a bigger camera. So, and 30 degree makes it hard. So as Dr. Kennedy was talking about, 120 degrees straightforward visualization makes this excellent for looking deep inside the subtalar joint. So now let's kind of demonstrate the uh, shaver. So you'd think that having a, uh, a two millimeter, 2.8 millimeter shaver, we would lack some of the, uh, the power. But the way they've made this is they increased the ability in the, I would say the, I don't know if the best word is sharpness, but this thing can really get in for a subtalar fusion. So that's what we're going to kind of talk about today is how I do my subtalar fusions. I have not done an open subtalar fusion uh, since leaving fellowship. I've been doing them all arthroscopically. So this is the subtalar arthroscopic arthrodesis. And it really shows this little teeny shaver. Don't underestimate it because it can really get in, get some... Uh, tissue gone. And this is just in a couple seconds. So you don't need to have to rely on that huge shaver. As with any joint fusion, you got to stick to your principles. Just because we're using a small scope doesn't mean we can avoid our principles. So that's just kind of showing that. And then I'd like to just show some of the, the instruments and how effective uh, these are as well. So just they're disposable. So they're sharp. You can use either side and we can come in and this just really allows us some precision. So that's the beautiful part about using a disposable tray is that these are just so sharp. My tools lose their uh, ability to cut in precision very quickly. But with these little scoops, you can just see how precise they are and how sharp they are. And again, if we have trouble getting into an area, we can bend it, manipulate it, and keep driving on. But you can see these things are not struggling with this tissue and just really working out really nice. So like any joint, then after you get the cartilage off and can visualize it, the burr, is also a great feature. We saw this yesterday in our fusion talks. So being able to come in here and make some of our pock marks and kind of make it look like the surface of the moon or as Dr. Kenny said, you know, a battle zone in here and just kind of put some marks in here. And again, small but powerful. And that's what we need. Because when they first were talking about how small this shaver was in this burr, I was like, well, there's no way it's going to be able to do what I need it to do once I get in there because it's just too small. And as you can see, this is just demonstrating one small area. But this thing, it just does. It just works in that area. So that is already ready for fusion. Uh, and one thing else that we're talking about is this little, if you have little areas you can't reach to, this is their microfracture uh, pick that is teeny. You got to imagine this is on a microscope in the subtalar joint. So we can give it a couple taps. If you get hard to reach areas, you know, if you're good doing an ankle fusion and you have to go up into the ankle, the medial or lateral gutters, this gives you a really nice access point. And this, again, is easily bendable, and you can get to all these different areas, really uh, make it, the equipment work for you rather than vice versa. So this gives you a nice, if you little areas you missed, and you can kind of just make them soft and get it all ready for okay. fusion. So that's how I do my, uh, my subtalar prep. At this point, too, then I would dry the joint and then inject whatever biologic we have in the room that day. And then from here, uh, I put two uh, 7.0 Comp FT screws in. Uh, for the fusion, one up into the head, one up to the head neck junction. Uh, moving towards what I've been doing lately. So with talus fractures, who's, you know, treating talus fractures with arthroscopy is also kind of like doing in-office arthroscopy. It's kind of a new thing. So when I have a talus body fracture, as we can see here, if I have a body or even a neck, and I know I can't see the neck from back here, but if I get it reduced, then what I can do is take the guide wire. This is a 1.1 millimeter guide wire from Arthrex's uh, Comp FT system. So what I do is I put the screw in the back, right in through my portal. And what it allows me to do is come right off. So here's FHL, come right off FHL, right off the articular margin. So I'm looking at the cartilage. I can come down. Of course, in real life, we had to verify with fluoroscopy. But we get this just off right there. We'll see if FHL decides to grab hold or not. So of course, a little soft tissue. That's real life, right? So we'll take our uh, ablator back and we can go in here and clean this up. This is how I also how I fix my posterior malleolus fractures. So in, in my world at Ohio State, uh, the trauma team doesn't love foot and ankle uh, trauma. So then we, uh, we get it in our end. So posterior malleolus, same way. Uh, we came out with that paper this year so we can verify it with some good evidence. But we get around it. And now we got our drill. We, of course, measure. And then what we do next is we countersink per the, per the normal steps that we'd put in any screw. So again, just because you're doing it with a scope doesn't mean that you change your principles. All the same principles apply. Soft tissue Soft guide tissue. down. This is the, the countersink we have here. So we're going to countersink. We can pull that out and then we'll drill.
All right, there we go. You can imagine our Kalos fracture. We come up here, we could visualize it, make sure it's reduced, come back down. Now we have these screws. So this right here, uh, if you're looking at the skin, this is a Comp FT 3.5 millimeter. Why I use this screw for posterior mount and for tailless for a couple of reasons. It's uh, cannulated, so I can do it through the scope. Secondly, it's titanium. So if I need a post-operative MRI, I get less scatter. That's a Thornson paper. Also, it's fully threaded and compression. So not only is it going to compress my tailless fracture, it's going to prevent long-term collapse. So for me, this is kind of a perfect uh, screw for this indication. And then you can just slide it right down, right in through the back, just like that. And again, direct visualization. We talk about, is your screw proud? Is it sticking out? Is it impinging on the cartilage? Then we can switch to hand. So you can bring your screwdriver right up. And that's, again, these screws have great bite. And when you get done, you pull it, and you can just visualize. That's the beauty of being able to do this through Nano. It allows me to visualize the subtalar joint, the tibial tailor joint, and really do some advanced uh, procedures that may otherwise be very difficult. And we also know that screws in the tailors for tailors fracture from P to A are actually the strongest. So we're also maximizing biomechanical uh, force as well. So there, I think we would all be pretty confident in leaving uh, that right there. And then if this is a real case, I would, of course, do another one over here and do both of them to the head, neck. And of course, you're, you're verifying with fluoroscopy as well. And that's what I like to tell my trauma colleagues. This does not replace fluoroscopy. This just complements your standard repairs that you're doing anyway. Uh, so again, you can use this same technique for talus and also uh, for posterior malleolus fractures. So uh, the, end, the options and the tools you use are endless with this little scope. So uh, I hope to be doing them in the office like Dr. Kennedy at some point, but right now for me, it's in the OR and these are some of the tips that, uh, that I've been working on.